All right, this video is going to be about the Laplace transform and some basic properties. So I'm going to give a definition and a, a couple definitions and a theorem uh, without proof, but then we'll talk about kind of the one of the big propositions that you use a lot to solve uh, differential equations using the Laplace transform, and we will solve that. It's just basically an, another integration by parts proof. So. Um, you know, a couple of the theorems in here are important, are important obviously. Um, I don't know that there's anything that mechanical on here, except for the last uh, proposition that's going to be useful. Um, so, you know, if you're trying to do a quick review of Laplace transform, you could maybe, I don't know, maybe skip this one. This, this, this video will have a little more theory in it. But again, you know, obviously that's useful to uh, understand the stuff. So, the definition here, function, we say a function f of t is of what's called exponential order if there are constants c and a such that the absolute value of the function is always bounded by that exponential function, c e to the a times t. So, there basically says, um, we say a function's of exponential order if it goes to infinity slower than does um, an exponential function, again the absolute value of that function rather. So lots of functions satisfy that property if you think about it. I mean exponential functions get really big really really fast so this is a uh, this is kinda good in the sense that there are lots of functions of exponential order. So um, another little theorem here. Okay so suppose f is a piecewise continuous function and I didn't give uh, the definition of piecewise continuous, but we say a function is piecewise continuous uh, if it has only finitely many points of discontinuity over any finite interval, and at every point of discontinuity, the limit of f exists from both the left and the right. Okay, so you may uh, look up piecewise continuous function. I forgot to write that one down. But if you've got a piecewise continuous function uh, defined on 0 to infinity, and that function's of exponential order, it says the Laplace transform exists, basically is what it says. Okay, so that's what you need to take away from this theorem. If you have a piecewise continuous function, um, it's of exponential order, well, then you can start using Laplace transform stuff on this. Okay, again, not all functions are of exponential order. I kind of, uh, I think, scratched one out here. Um, for example, e to the t squared, that would be not of exponential order. Just to throw out a function that, uh, you know, wouldn't satisfy this stuff, for example. Alrighty, so a couple definitions here. So the next thing I want to talk about here is kind of the important, one of the big important properties to, to, to use in order to solve these differential equations using Laplace transform. So what it says is, it says, suppose y is a piecewise differentiable function, and I guess I didn't give piecewise differentiable either, but we say a function is piecewise differentiable if it's continuous and if it's derivative is piecewise continuous. So again, a couple definitions maybe to look up. So if it's piecewise differentiable and of exponential order, um, and also suppose its derivative is of exponential order, then what it says basically, it says the Laplace transform of the derivative is going to equal s times the Laplace transform of the original function minus this initial condition y of 0. Okay, and just alternate notations here for, again, for the Laplace transform. So what this really kind of says, if you think about it, you know, normally having a function and, and taking its derivative, that can be kind of a tedious process. But it says under the Laplace transform, um, somehow taking the derivative is somehow equivalent to multiplying by s under this Laplace transform. So somehow this just makes things mechanically much easier to deal with. All right, well, let's prove this. Um, let's prove this since it's so important. So take here a uh, you know, couple minutes to go through this proof. Again, all we're really using is integration by parts. So that proposition is the important thing. Again, if you're just uh, wanting to see the mechanics, you could probably skip this proof. Um, but again, I think it's kind of just a, you know insightful as to what's going on. Okay, so we've got the Laplace transform of the derivative of s. Well, by definition, that's just the integral from 0 to infinity. y prime of t, so we take our function, e to the negative st dt. And well, this is just a, a, one of these nice little improper integrals, so I'm going to use 0 to capital T. And then we'll have the limit as t goes to infinity. So we've got y prime of t 
e to the negative st dt. So now we've got to integrate this lovely function, and you know, again, we're just going to use integration by parts on this. So the integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. Um, let's see here. So we've got to pick u, and from that we'll calculate du. We'll pick our dv, and from that we'll integrate to get back to v. Well, um, I'm going to let dv be the derivative portion, the y prime of t, dt. Well, if you integrate that, uh, if you integrate the derivative, we'll just get back to our function y of t. So that means we'll let u be the e to the negative st portion. And when you take the derivative, we get e to the negative st. But then by the chain rule, you've got to multiply by the derivative of the exponent. Since t is our variable, that means we'll pick up a negative s. Okay, uh, try to separate that there a little bit. All right, so now uh, we're just going to fill in, um, just use our integration by parts formula. So we have the limit as t goes to infinity. So it says, well, you get u times v. So u times v. So we have e to the negative s t times y of little t. Um, our limits of integration would be 0 to capital T minus the integral of v. Okay, which is y of t uh, times du, which is negative s e to the negative st. This negative s is a constant, though, so I think I'm going to factor that negative s out front, and that'll give us, well, positive s. Then we have e to the negative st dt. Again, our limits of integration, 0 to capital T. All right, so getting a little bit, uh, a little bit closer here. So now all I'm going to do is just start plugging in uh, limits of integration. Okay, so it says we've got the limit as capital T goes to infinity. So again, uh, we're replacing, remember, little t is our variable, so we'll get e to the negative s times capital T, and then y of capital T, so when I plug in my upper limit. Minus, let's see, when we plug in uh, 0, well, we'll get e to the 0 times y of 0. And I'm going to leave this other part alone here. It's from 0 to t, y of t, e to the negative st dt. Well, okay, so if you think about it, you know, if you apply the limit, we've got, well, the limit as t goes to capital infinity. We've got e to the negative st y of t, uh, notice the middle part is just actually going to be a constant. e to the 0 is 1. y of 0 is just the you know initial condition associated with the original function. So we'll just get minus y of 0. And then we would have the limit as t goes to infinity um, of s times 0 to t, y of t, e to the negative st dt. But notice now this uh, this this portion, uh, from 0 to t as t goes to infinity, that's just the Laplace transform of the original function being multiplied here by s. All right, so I'm getting a little bit closer here. So now kind of the question is, what happens to this first term? So that's the only thing where we really still have the limit, um, the limit still hanging out. So now we have to figure out what happens to this term. And if we can show that this term goes to 0, we'll have prove in what we want. We'll have uh, s times the Laplace transform uh, minus this initial condition. So our goal now is to use, uh, to show that this term goes to 0. All right, well, let's see. I think we're getting, uh, getting pretty close here. Um, what we're going to have to use at this point now is the fact that we've got a function of exponential order, okay? So, all right, so what we have here, um, so again, uh, we said y is of exponential order, so that means that y of t, the absolute value of that, remember, that means that we can find these constants c and a so that this happens for t greater than zero. Um, see if I can find my exponential order 
uh, definition. So okay, so we're just using this property now with our function y. Okay, so that happens. Well, if that happens, that means that e to the negative s t times the absolute value. Okay, well that's going to be less than or equal to e to the negative s t. Whoops, capital T here. And then uh, we can bound that. So we've got c e to the a. Um, I should have a capital T there as well. I apologize. So capital T, capital T, capital T, capital T, and another capital T here. Um, so let's play with this just a little bit more. Okay, so now the right side, we can simply write this. The C comes out front. Um, we would have E. We've got like bases, so we have negative ST uh, plus AT. With like bases, we just add the exponents. And well, what we can do here is we can factor the T out, and we can even factor the negative out. So we would have negative S minus A uh, times capital T. But notice kind of the, the key thing here is, okay, so if we look at the limit as capital T goes to infinity of this term, if S is greater than A, and that was one of our, um, you know, one of our results here that says that's when the Laplace transform exists. Okay, notice if S is greater than A, this limit is actually going to go to, well, zero. Okay, you know, if s is greater than a, this is going to be some uh, positive number, but then you have some negative exponent attached to it. So, you know, pretend, for example, that c is 1, you know, s minus a, since s is bigger than a, that's some positive number, 1. Well, then you've got something like the limit as t goes to infinity of e to the negative t. And that's the same thing as the limit as t goes to infinity of 1 over e to the t. And that's going to give you 0. So, okay, that's the basic idea. Again, c is some constant, whatever it is. Um, you're going to kind of get a negative exponent at the end of the day. Since you have a negative exponent, that's going to give you 1 over some positive exponent. And that limit is simply going to go to 0. Um, and that, in turn, implies that um, this original limit is also going to equal 0. And now we're left with what we wanted. Uh, we wanted to be left with just this portion, and that's what we've now got. Okay, so we have now shown that the Laplace transform of the derivative just gives us s times the Laplace transform of the original function minus this y of 0. Okay, so again, going to be a very important property. Um, I'm going to generalize this a little bit further in another video, and again, soon we'll start talking about how we actually use this to solve equations.